Okay. Good afternoon. How's everybody? I hope everybody is doing well. We are, I am shooting this video on February 9th, which was a pretty chilly minus 30 this morning, but we are going to warm up and have a um, excellent tasting with some sunshine in the glass. Um, and we are going to be trying the wines of Domaine de la Porte, Sancerre. We're going to go to France for this tasting. And we are going to try, as I said, some sunshine in a glass. So, first of all, my name is Ryan Everett. I am with the Trialto Wine Group. And I represent the winery of Domaine de la Porte. We're going to be trying three wines this afternoon during this video tasting. Uh, the white, the rosé, and the red. So whatever your favorite color is for wine, we've got you covered. Um, just so we are all aware, this is the home tasting and video series, which has been uh, put on by the fine people at Fine Wines by Liquor Select, Jeff and Leo and the crew. So we will be doing, or this is their contribution to their video series. So if I'm not mistaken, you can take part of this in your home, watch this video, buy the wines ahead of time, and join along. So we're going to be taking... 10, 15, 20 minutes of your time, not too, too much. I'm going to do a little bit of background on the region, the winery, the wines, and then we'll try them and we'll go from there. A couple of uh, kind of housekeeping things to take into account as before we get into the tasting. Um, I will get through the prices and the packaging of, the, of this winery. So if you were to buy the package of the wines, you will get 15% off of the retail price. Okay, the prices of the wines are, if you are ready, for the white and the rosé, they are $42 and $44 respectively, and for the red, it's back to $42. So 42 44 42 pretty straightforward. You buy the package, you join along, you get 15% off. If you happen to see this video and you would like to try the wines, um, and maybe do it with the video at a later date, you will still get 10% off of the wines up until March 14th, okay? Um, one thing that I did create, um, which you either have maybe an electronic version of or a printed version of, is I did up this document here on the winery, okay? Just a little bit of uh, background. I've highlighted it for my notes for this uh, tasting. Um, this is Matthew, by the way. Um, you also have, you know, info sheets, on each of the wines as well, which we can go into as we go through the tasting. So, without further ado, I think we should get into the tasting. So, as I said, we are going to be trying some sunshine in a glass. We are going to be doing Domaine de la Porte Sancerre. Now, many of you are probably familiar with the name Sancerre. Um, you have probably had it before or have come across it, so we will dig a little bit deeper. First and foremost, Sancerre is from France. <clears throat> the greater region that Sancerre is a part of is the Loire Valley. Loire, L-O-I-R-E. It runs along the Loire River, which starts in the Atlantic Ocean on the uh, western part of France, and then runs pretty much right through the middle and ends up in the middle of France, give or take. The Loire Valley is made up of many AOCs, many Appalachians, relatively small Appalachians. Some of the more famous ones would be Muscadet, Poulifousse, sorry, Poulifoumé, Poulifoumé is in Burgundy, Anjou, Saumur, Chinon, which is known for Cabernet Franc, uh, Vouvray, which is known for Chenin Blanc, and Sancerre. So if you were to take the regions of um, Poulifoumé, and Sancerre, if we were to start um, on the Atlantic Ocean, the river runs, and on the most eastern part of the Loire Valley, you would find Sancerre and Poulifoumé. Now, um, the AOC of Sancerre was one of, is one of the older ones in France. It was created in 1936, and some of the terroir reasons of why it is so famous and so uh, sought after is that it is mainly consists of chalk coming from the cliffs of Dover. So there's a lot of chalk 
there is a lot of flint. There's marl and gravel and some some sandy um, uh, areas as well, mainly planted for some of the red grapes, which we will get into. But it is that chalk and that flint and the marl, which is kind of like clay, um, which really adds a key component of the wines, which is minerality, um, uh, that flinty taste, that um, kind of matchstick, uh, but also like kind of like a wet rock. If you ever, you know, as your kid, if you put a wet rock in your mouth, which you probably shouldn't have done. Um, anyways, it's that kind of that that wet stone kind of uh, smell and, and taste to it, um, which which is very consistent of the wines of Sancerre. Now, the main grape of Sancerre and uh, Pouli Fumé is Sauvignon Blanc. About 75% of the region is planted to the white varietal uh, Sauvignon Blanc. I did indicate earlier that other regions like Vouvray is Chenin Blanc, um, Chinon is Cabernet Franc, but we're dealing with Sancerre. So 75% white Sauvignon Blanc. The other 25%, which would be planted to red in more of like that... Uh, kind of marl and, and gravel and, and sandy soil is Pinot Noir. So 75 Sauvignon Blanc, 25 Pinot Noir. Um, and we will be trying both today, okay? That's a little bit of background on the Loire Valley, um, on the region of Sancerre. Um, if you have any questions or if you want to um, uh, look into it deeper, obviously, Wikipedia, Google, Google image, the Loire Valley, bring up a map of it. It'll give you a nice breakdown of, of how it runs. So um, moving on to this really quickly, we're just going to go through some of the aspects of the winery. OK, Domaine Delaporte uh, has been around since the 17th century. It's a family run business um, back in the, you know, the 1600s, 1700s. Um, they weren't having video meetings and, and having, um, you know, wine experts giving you uh, a taste through of the wines, but it was much more of a utilitarian farm type, a village type system. Um, but nonetheless, the 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 winery, the, the land has been passed down in the Delaporte family, which is fantastic. It, it, it's um, obviously something in North America, um, we don't really have as much of that history. Predates Canada as a country. Um, the specific town that the Delaporte Winery is from is from, we'll put that here, Chevignol. Now, um, some of you gastronomes might be familiar with the name Chevignol because it is famous for goat cheese. So I should have said this at the start. You should run and go get some goat cheese. Um, that kind of acidic, kind of crumbly, but sometimes a very creamy goat cheese, uh, famous from the Loire Valley, goes brilliant with these wines. Absolutely. Um, at the helm, making wine right now is the grandson or, or the, you know, heir apparent grandson in the family, Matthew Delaporte. Showed you a picture earlier. Well, he's a, he's a dashing young man in the vineyard, the shot, the town over his shoulder. Beautiful. Um, and in Vincent, which I believe is his... Uh, Dad or grandfather, I can't remember off the top of my head, but um, nonetheless, Matthew has been at the helm since 2010. So, you know, 11 vintages or, or soon to be 11 vintages under his belt for a relatively young man. Um, the estate vineyards, uh, all estate vineyards, 33 hectares, I believe, um, are all formed organically. They're all picked by hand. It is Sancerre after all, so it is on the banks of a river, so it's not you know, valley floor flat, it is relatively hilly. Um, so, you know, picking by hand is probably the best way to do it and tractors might not be able to get around that way. So advantageous, right? Um, as I indicated, Sauvignon Blanc, Pinot Noir, um, all organic, all estate fruit. Uh, just with regards to um, getting into some of the winemaking aspects, um, because as I alluded to earlier, Sauvignon Blanc tends to be, or Sancerre tends to be very reflective of its terroir. And you get that minerality, that flintiness, that, that it's Sauvignon Blanc. So you're expecting acidity and sharpness, et cetera. But one thing that Domaine Delaporte does do is they do put their Sauvignon Blanc in oak for a while. Um, not barriques, but the really big oak barrels. And I'll actually show you a picture. Um, so they do... Their whites, their Sauvignon Blancs go into 600 liter tones, 
and 2,000 liter food drugs. Okay, so I'm going to show you a quick picture here. Uh, you can see that that is going to be the larger tanks. Now, off the top of my head, I can't tell you if that's 600 liters or 2,000, um, but you get the idea. So, more wine to um, less surface area of oak, but what it's adding richness and it's adding a bit of complexity. And personally, I find it adds a little bit of um, creaminess to it. So everyone's had a New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc, very expressive, very bright, sharp, acidic, that type of thing, um, or Chilean Sauvignon Blanc, um, which can be quite nice. Uh, great value, again, a little bit more on that sharp, acidic, fruity side, but in Sancerre, I find you get Sauvignon Blanc with slightly subdued um, expressiveness of aromas and bouquet and a little bit of a creaminess on the palate, which I prefer personally. Um, a lot of time on lees, a lot of time on lees for all of the wines. Um, extracting the characteristics from the skins, obviously for the red, you're going to want to do that. Um, uh, the rosé, it's it's a bit of a faster process. It's a bit of a, you know, like a, 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 a the bleeding um, it, uh, system in order to make rosé. But even in the, um, in the Sauvignon Blanc and the Sancerre White, <clears throat> a lot of lees time, which we will get into when we try the wine. Um, the reds, as far as aging, they um, they go into your traditional bariques that you saw in the picture that I, that I said as well. Real quick quote, and then we'll get to the wines. Um, Precision, balance, and complexity are the watchwords of our cuvées, with each delivering a strong sense of their individual terroirs marked by considerable, considerable minerality, power, power, and freshness. Okay, that kind of sums up the winemaking style from the winery. Uh, we can go on to page number two and we can try the white. I just happen to have a glass of white right here. I hope you have, do as well. If not, pull the cork on that. All the wines we're going to be trying are from the 2019 vintage, which was a very nice year. Very consistent. Um, fruit was um, came out really, really nice and well balanced. Really good balance of fruit and acid and freshness and, and longevity too. Um, so for the Savignon Blanc, I should probably take a sip first. Mm. Predominantly limestone soils here. <clears throat> okay. So we're going to get a lot of that, a bit of that pucker, a bit of that, um, freshness, acidity is going to come through, um, acid as well. Um, and a lot, you know, you want to look for that minerality. Also that kind of, um, chalkiness uh and, and and you know anyways you try it and let me know we'll come back to it in a minute so lots of limestone soils the average age of the vines is about 35 years for Sauvignon Blanc we're getting into some you know complex flavors right not really young fruit not young fruit that needs to um grow a bigger canopy and get growing and get its roots going they're well established vines right okay fermentation and stainless steel okay uh, aging on the lees for six months. As I indicated earlier, a lot of lees aging. So that's how you can extract the, the flavors of the grape. You can really kind of pinpoint the flavors of Savino Blanc. You get a lot of lees aging with Chardonnays as well in Burgundy or, or even South America. And you just, you want that. You want those characteristics of the grape. So the richness of Savino Blanc can tend to come through in, in a region like Sancerre given lees aging. Okay. Um, and this Sancerre, you know, you try it, it's Savino Blanc, which is not known for like, you know, super age worthiness, but there are some older Sav Blancs that I have had that are incredibly good. So they say they, this can hang on to you for at least up to five years, which I would love to try an older Sav Blanc. I did do it once at Liquor Select, a bit of a, a side note with um, Dog Point out of New Zealand. An old Sauvignon Blanc, which was outstanding. It was brilliant. So <clears throat> young, crisp, vibrant Sauvignon Blancs are, are you know, what the, the, the wine world kind of ships and exports, and that's what they expect us to drink. But hold on to one for a couple of years and just see what happens, and the complexity is, is quite nice. Okay? So let's try it again. I'm, I'm getting, like... <clears throat> Good fresh fruit, 
a lot of citrus, but at the same time, a little bit more melons, um, you know, even like, like pineapple, melon. And again, it's, it's a little bit, um, a little bit softer and richer on the palate. Personally, I don't like my white wines really cold. I like them, you know, in the fridge, but then taken out and then never put back in. Not that I'm going to drink the whole bottle, but it, it has happened from time to time. But um, I find that when a white wine warms up a little bit, you really find, um, you really can find out a lot more of its characteristics. So this I took out at least an hour ago as I was preparing for the, the video, and, and I think it's at a really good place right now. Okay. Yes, good, very good. Um, let's have a quick look. I think that's good on the white. Any questions? Just kidding, can't ask questions. Um, but here, uh, some tasting notes that they say. Boxwood, which I don't know what that is. Rhubarb, blackcurrant, kiwi fragrances, light vegetal touch, that light, light vegetal touch, I would agree with. Um, the entry is soft and round, again, I agree with. I think that's great. Bright freshness on the palate, delicate and lively purity. Sure, those are great adjectives. Um, I do agree with those, though. Um, purity, I, I get like a really kind of focused um, taste and experience with this. I do need to dump this out. One second. That pained me. That was a tragedy. But nonetheless, we do need to move on. We are going to get to the rosé. I just happen to have a bottle right here. I hope you do too. Delaporte 2019 rosé. Really nice color to this. 100% um, Pinot Noir. Okay. As I indicated earlier, the only two grapes are Savino Blanc and um, uh, Pinot Noir. So rosé vines are at least 15 years old. From my experience with some other wineries around the world, sometimes they farm certain vineyards destined for rosé differently than they do other other parts of their vineyards. So sometimes they crop them a little bit, you know, more tonnage per acre. They want some acidity in it. It depends. Um, but younger vines tend to make sometimes better rosés, ironically enough, um, because you're not making a red and you're not making a white. You're making, you know, it's it's a it's a wine that is a result of a process, right? It's red grapes, but they're 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 just gently pressed, and it's the runoff, and you get a rosé. So, um, 15 years old. Uh, it does indicate some limestone soil. Okay, so kind of a combination of of the red and white soils here is Pinot, but it's limestone. But it's agrido silicea soil, which is like that clay and that sand, which which does quite well for Pinot. The sand allows for good drainage. Um, and, and then the Pinot will finds really get established. Uh, indicates alcoholic fermentation is carried out for 12 days in stainless steel um, that are thermal regulated at a temperature of 15 degrees and then six months on lees for a rosé. Let's try it to find out exactly what six months of lees aging will do. Bright red fruits. Strawberries, raspberries, cranberries, bright red fruits. I love it. And you do get some tannins. You get some tannic structure out of there. I love it. Get a bit of tannins. I don't like my rosés to be sweet, um, and I don't like them to be too strong. Obviously, I like them down the middle. Pinot Noir, I find, is a great um, red grape for making rosés. Um, because it's such a thin-skinned grape, you can kind of play with the time frame. From, from the winemaking process for the drainage um, or, or lees contact, right? Six months is, is quite long. I mean, I'm actually surprised they didn't extract more color um, if you're having skin contact or lees contact for six months. Um, quite interesting. Mm. So what could you pair with a rosé sancerre? I'm going to say pretty much anything, um, even a minus 30 day. Uh, if you really believe, you can do it. Obviously, goat cheese is a good one. Obviously, um, uh, after a, a day at work, when you might just want a glass of wine, a patio. Sometime it's going to be spring and summer. That'll be pretty good. Uh, obviously, fish, salad, chicken, barbecue, friends, all of the above. Okay. Um, Sancerre Rosé is not a very popular, not, not, not popular, not a very common wine. Um, you, we don't get a lot of it as an importer. 
we don't see more than, you know, 10, 20, 30 cases a year. That's it. It's not a high production wine. Very good rosé. Again, it's, it's north of 40 bucks. So um, you do have to pay for it. But we are dealing with some of the best rosés. I mean, got to tip your hat to the French. They know how to make pink wine really well. If you go down to Tavel in the Rhone Valley or Provence, oof, it's really, really nice. Um, I have a lot of time for this rosé. This is really good. I have to be cognizant of time. We're at 20 minutes already. So <clears throat> say no more. Let's get to the Pinot. Page number three of your wines. The Pinot. Okay, here we go. I just happen to have a glass right here. So now, Pinot, a little bit more traditional, obviously. I mean, the white Sancerre is traditional. The rosé, a little bit different. Red Sancerre, again, not high production. Remember, the vineyards are 75 white, 25 red. So we're dealing with, obviously, a lower production. Again, we don't get as much of this. Uh, just to give you an idea, the white Sancerre, we sell you know, eight, nine bottles of those for out of every 10 for the rosé and the red combined, right? We sell a ton of white Sancerre and the red and the rosé are a much smaller segment because we get less, there's less available and people don't know about them as well, but that's okay. They're hidden secrets. It's not that they're not good. Um, they're just a, a rarer wine. Uh, the red, the vines here range from 20 to 40 years. So some of the oldest estate vineyards for uh, Domaine de la Porte are for Pinot. 70% of these vines are planted in a grillocilios clay, sandy flint soil, as I indicated earlier. Uh, the remaining 30% are in that limestone, which is again, similar to what the rosé was, right? So we're getting more of that clay suitable for Pinot and that limestone, which is a little bit more suitable for the whites. Nonetheless, you're gonna get minerality in this as well. 100% hand-picked, as I indicated earlier. Fermentation is carried out 12 days, uh, daily pumping over, okay, again, to do that extraction. If you look, this is a pretty dark Pinot. Like, I mean, I know it's hard and we're on video and everything, but it's a pretty dark, here, let's see if we can do this. It's a pretty dark Pinot. Um, malolactic fermentation, uh, which did not happen in the other two, uh, takes place in, in, in Bariks, so it's in oak. Um, and, and I'm assuming this is all old oak, right? I mean, those fudras, those tones, those big, big oak barrels, they're not new every year, they're old. So you get very gentle influence of the oak, but you nonetheless get that creaminess, right? Uh, so malolactic fermentation takes place in barriques at 50% and the other 50% in stainless steel for this Pinot. So half and half. Uh, let's try. That's a rich Pinot. It's good. It's got a lot more body than some Burgundies or Oregon Pinots. Um, it's got a little bit more tannic structure as well. I quite like it. If you're looking for a little bit of a bigger style Pinot, ironically enough, go to Sancerre. Um, red fruits. Yes. Cherries, um, raspberries, and some blackberries as well. Not quite as red as like the, the rosé, obviously, but cherry is a classic Pinot flavor. So you get some of that. I also get some like I get some of that like kind of matchstick graphite. Um, yeah, a little bit like leather, cigar box, tea leaf, you know, earth flavors, you know, that, that type of aroma. I get some of those as well. Quite nice. I like it. Um, what would you pair this with? Well, minus 30. <laughs> it might be a tougher wine to pair with goat cheese, to be honest. Uh, goat cheese being so kind of uh, more suited towards the, the whites or the rosés. But what does it indicate here? I mean, deli, contestant meats, you know, cold cuts, um, charcuterie, um, roasted meats, obviously. Uh, this is, it's a Pinot, so it's easy enough to be had on its own as well. Very nice, very balanced. Good fruit, good entry, good balance. From the start of your palate to the end of your palate, it's consistent. It's not too light, not too heavy. It's actually very medium bodied. A little bit heavier for a style of Pinot, but I, I don't mind that because I don't find it like too big and rich and heavy. And the oak is completely secondary. Um, I don't like a lot of oak in my wines, period. I want to taste the fruit. I want to taste the grape. And here I don't get a ton of oak. I get 
the fruit. And that's what I want. I want it to taste like a Pinot and I want it to taste like a region, which I think they've done a great job of. So we're at 25 minutes, so I should probably uh, wrap this up. Um, so first and foremost, I want to thank you for joining me. Okay. I know I went through the wines maybe a little bit fast, but don't worry. You've got bottles of everything. You can take your time, read the notes. Uh, remember, this is the home tasting and video series number five. Um, the prices are $42 for the white and the red, $44 for the rosé, okay? 15% off if you buy the package and do the video. If you want to do this afterwards, 10% off till March 14th. Um, we're dealing with the wines of Domaine Delaporte out of Sancerre, which is out of the Loire Valley. The white is Sauvignon Blanc, the rosé and the red are Pinot Noir. Thank you very much for your time. My name is Ryan. It's been a pleasure. Um, do support your local independent wine shop like Liquor Select. Uh, very innovative for them to be doing video tastings like this. Go give uh, Jeff and Leo a hand and, and ask them some questions and recommendations, and you won't be disappointed. Thank you very much. Stay warm. Have a good day.